All right, so look, my heater's on in the background. If you happen to hear it through the noise suppression, I apologize. But frankly, it's cold as hell in my office today. So look, this video is for Canon. So if you're not Canon, go ahead and watch something else. Just, I, I'm gonna wait. Okay, Canon, I hope you're watching this here, okay, fam? Look, I love you guys. My very first professional camera, which was clearly a really entry-level camera, was the old school, the non-I model. It was just a T5. Not the fancier T5i, again, just the straight up T5. And you know what, for the most part, it was a great photography camera. Video, not so much, because it didn't autofocus while filming. I had to constantly hit the shutter button, like what I'm doing right now on my a7 IV. But for the most part, for stationary videos like this here for YouTube, it was okay. It wasn't bad, but it was primarily a photo camera first, so it was pretty good. But I wanted something that had autofocus while filming video for obvious reasons. So whenever I upgraded to the T6i right after that, it was a welcome change. Then I went from the T6i to the 77D. And while it only shot it in 1080p video, it had Canon's legendary dual pixel autofocus. And for a one person wrecking crew here, you know, a single person setup and whatnot, having that reliable autofocus was a game changer for my YouTube videos because I knew for a fact I would always be in focus nice and sharp, right? And then I upgraded to Canon's legendary EOS R. While it's not necessarily their first step into the mirrorless world, it was definitely their more professional line of mirrorless cameras with the EOS R, the EOS RP, and now of course you have the upper echelon like the EOS R5, the EOS R6, R3, all that jazz. And then of course the even cheaper variants with the crop sensors, the uh, R7 and the R10. And you know what? They're amazing cameras. And I would have loved to stick with them. A matter of fact, I was very close to selling this A7 IV of mine here to get the EOS R6 Mark II. But there's one thing that kept me from doing that. And I know that Frono's photo, you know, Jared Poland a few weeks or so ago made a video about the same thing. And naturally, his voice is going to be heard by way more people than my small channel here. But... This is just coming from another consumer that used to love working with Canon and their lenses, their camera bodies, like I used to be a Canon fanboy. But then whenever they released the RF mount, of course, with the EOS style of mirrorless cameras, they basically told everybody that no one is allowed to make third-party glass, that they were locking the RF mount down to Canon-only first-party lenses. And here's the thing, okay? I totally understand that because, you know, they want to make sure that they themselves work out all the bugs with their new mirrorless mount, and they want to make sure that they're putting out the best quality glass they can, so that way there, somebody can't pick up a really expensive EOS R camera and say, hey, the camera's great, but man, these lenses suck, or man, this lens must not be focusing fast enough because this body's horrible. I totally get that. I do. But at the same time, though, Look at what Sony's done. Look at what Nikon's done. Look at what Panasonic's done. So many third-party companies are able to make very good lenses for a fraction of the price of the first-party options out there. Now, of course, I will always be a big fan of buying native first-party glass, you know. Uh, for my Sony here, I have the native Sony E-mount full-frame edition of their 50mm lens. I have the kit lens, which is, of course, the 24-70 to f3.5 for this camera here. And they're both amazing lenses. They really are. And this lens right here, I wouldn't be able to use it on my old Canon EOS R if I still had it. This here is the Samyang 24mm f1.8. And it's an amazing lens. It's literally a third of the price of some of the first party options out there. And this is running wide open F1.8 S in a tone. And personally, I think it looks really sharp. I think it looks really good. And you might be saying, well, Terry, this really shouldn't be that big of a deal if you're on Canon because you can always buy the older EF glass and then use the official or third party adapter kit to go from EF to RF. And here's the thing. Yes, you can. And from my understanding, a matter of fact, from adapting my old EF glass to the EOS R body that I had previously, for the most part, it was a one-to-one -one deal. 
everything worked the way it should. There were no issues that I had. My 50 millimeter lens, the EF Nifty 50, locked focus the same way it did on my old 77D. But the fact of the matter here is, folks, is that a lot of people want to buy new glass with the new lens mount just to make sure there are no underlying issues that might get kind of lost in translation from using an adapter. Myself included in that. Unfortunately, I know that Viltrox is a really, really good brand. I've used a lot of their lenses before, even so on the Sony A7 IV of mine. But I had a Viltrox adapter um, that was an EF to RF adapter, and I had some issues with that to where it would cause my lenses to not focus correctly. The focus was very, very, very slow. But at the same time, though, I was using it on my Nifty 50. And for portraits, that was, well, one, the only portrait lens I had at the time. But it was my favorite portrait lens for, I think, should be obvious reasons. You know what I mean? But the fact that it gave me so much trouble, for me, it really wasn't worth it. So what I ended up doing was I just sent that adapter back, I sold my EF 50mm lens, and I bought the RF model of the same lens. And just like you would imagine, everything, because it was a native mount, native glass, it worked flawlessly and gave me no issues whatsoever. Now, while I know a lot of you out there might, might be thinking, well, Tara, you know, it's easy for you to say stuff like that whenever you're using a $2,400 camera body. This video is mainly for me to just let off some frustration. You know what I mean? Because there are a lot of up-and-coming photographers, videographers out there that really love to use Canon gear, but they sort of kind of feel like they're stuck. You know what I mean? Like, they want to buy the latest and greatest lenses, but at the same time, though, they might not be able to afford the native RF glass because of how expensive it can be. Where on a system like Sony with their E-mount that has probably about a million and one different lens combinations out there, they would have to change bodies, change brands, you know, change their loyalty, if you will. But any E-mount lens will work on any Sony mirrorless camera. And if you happen to put a crop lens on a full frame camera, it will automatically detect that and go into APS-C mode or, you know, crop mode. So where everything is just seamless. And if you're a new up and coming creator, that just might be the push you need to swap brands entirely. Like, unfortunately, it made me do. And the thing is, folks, is that I just want my stuff to work. You know, I just want to slap a lens on, have everything work right out of the box. If I can't get a shot, if I can't get the video because my lens is screwing up because of an adapter, there goes my money. There goes my shoot. There goes the whatever event I might have been hired for that might prevent me from getting hired by this place ever again because I missed a crucial moment. You know what I mean? And I can't afford that. I don't know anybody who can, but personally, again, I can't afford that kind of what if scenario. You know what I mean? So look, with all that being said here, everybody, Canon, I love you guys and gals. You all are amazing. You make some of the best glass in the entire world. Your color science, as we all know, is legendary. Everybody loves Canon dual pixel autofocus, loves your color science. Y'all are amazing at what you do. And that Canon R6 Mark II, mwah, it's beautiful. The AI technology y'all got in there for the autofocus, it's some of the best in the business, if not the best in the business. But I'm begging you, as a consumer and as a creator, please, please, please allow third-party lens makers to start making glass natively for your RF mount cameras. Please. That way there you'll be able to get new creators. Old creators might come back to you, and you never know. That might include me as well.